PV Power Up, serving photovoltaic contractors and integrators with practical information and answers. We're going to take a little look inside the inverter here. Now there's a lot of things that go on automatically here that we really don't need to be concerned about. And generally speaking, we won't be in this part of the inverter unless we're having some difficulty. Typically your inverters are going to come with a five-year standard warranty, but you can purchase a warranty that extends it to 10, 15, or 20 years. UL requires that the inverters shut off automatically if there's not an AC signal or AC voltage. That's both for the safety of people and for equipment. So if the power goes off in the building, your inverter and your PV system are going to shut down. You can't use it as a standby power system unless you hook up batteries to it. Now that safety feature helps protect linemen or firemen if they come into the building and turn off the electricity that'll also shut off the PV system so it's not an alternate source feeding into the panels without someone knowing because they will shut off. And when that shuts off it generally is required that it takes five to ten minutes for the inverter to come back on. So if you ever hook up a system and turn on the inverter and wonder why you're not getting an AC signal it's because you haven't waited long enough. Where you're really going to be working is down in the lower part of most of these inverters. Whether it has a built-in DC disconnect or you have to add one, the wires typically are going to come into the bottom of the inverter. On this particular inverter here, we have the positive side, or in this case, the ungrounded side. There are a few panels that have a grounded positive side. We're not going to discuss that today, but just keep that in mind. The positive wires from the DC voltage or the DC panels comes into this side here and this has three strings in it. Often the combiners will have multiple numbers of strings and each string is fused independently. The negative wire or the grounded side of the PV system comes in on this other side. A bunch of magic goes on up here and then we have AC power coming out the other side we have a line one, a line two, and a neutral. You would also be pulling a ground wire along with the AC side as well, but your 240 or 208 voltage, in a case of larger inverters, 277 or 488 or 480, would be hooked to the AC side. When this leaves the inverter, it would go either to a distribution panel or an AC disconnect and then connect to the building power. The SMA inverter works pretty much the same as the Selectory inverter we were looking at. The DC disconnect isn't integral, but it does come as a standard option on most of the inverters. So same concept, you have the string combiner box built into the DC disconnect and it feeds into the inverter. Out from there, it goes out to the AC power supply and hooks up to the building. When you're getting into larger commercial installations and you're looking at a three-phase inverter, you can use three single-phase inverters to make one larger inverter, or you can buy a single large three-phase inverter. In most of these installations, you're not going to be running the wires directly back to the inverter. You may have hundreds or even thousands of panels up in your installation and those wires are ran to a combiner box and then sometimes a, a sub-combiner box. So you have many fewer connections actually going into the inverter. Once the connection is made to the inverter, it's going to typically go through one large DC disconnect that can turn off the whole system in one location. This may be required by local codes, by the fire department, or the local utility. Once the power goes into the inverter, it comes out the other side and is ran into the distribution system or through a large AC disconnect. Now whether the inverter is small or large, almost all of them have a communication option. We're not going to talk a lot about that today, but if you want to be able to display, read, or know what your PV system is doing, it's very important to have that capability either built into the inverter or to add it on to keep track of your system. We're here looking at an installation of several SMA 700 watt or 0.7 kW inverters. These inverters are being used for research purposes. This building has several different types of panels with and without trackers 
to monitor the output and the history of performance over a long period of time. All the data from these inverters are being monitored on a computer at a remote location. But this is similar to an installation where you might use three or six small inverters on a larger system in lieu of one large inverter to get a three-phase type of connection to the gr uh, grid or to the building system. When it comes time to pick the final inverter you're going to use on your system, remember there's a lot of options out there and if you're not sure which inverter to pick, contact an experienced engineer or integrator to help you make that choice. We would like to thank our sponsor, Innovatus Solar, a turnkey integrator and distributor of PV modules, inverters, and all the additional equipment to install a state-of-the-art photovoltaic system. Visit Innovatus Solar at innovateussolar.com to find a dealer, purchase PV equipment, inquire about dealerships, or speak with a salesperson about Innovative Solar's turnkey services including feasibility studies, engineering, construction, and financing. <music>